When it comes to planning for events, whether that's a fundraising event or an activity that one of your programs is going to do, I can truly say the devil is in the details. I've seen this be the thing that hijacks so many nonprofits, creates great conflict. So today, I want to share some success stories, some opportunities, some strategies for how to manage your events effectively. Hi, I'm Teresa Clark, and I'm a CPA with over 25 years of experience serving 501c3 nonprofits. See, my passion is to help nonprofits answer money questions so that they can move on to achieve their mission. So think of me as a strategic partner to mastering the money. You can visit my website for more resources. All right. So as you're planning any kind of an event in your nonprofit, I really want to encourage you to systematize this, create a a general template or a form that will work. Um, for the purposes of our illustration today, I'm just gonna literally pull an example off the, the internet. I'm gonna share my favorite, not my favorite, but one that I think is really well laid out for what we're talking about. Okay, so let me just um, go over here and share this with you. Okay, so here we have, funny thing is just a really you know quick little Google search. I said event budget with income. And I think that's important because it's probably one of the most common pitfall, pitfalls, which is that we don't think about what the funding sources are going to be for our event. Um, and in that, I mean, like the example here, there's entry fees, which is going to be a per person number, and there's ticket sales, right? They have other income or maybe have a budget that's going to help cover the cost of an event. So definitely think you want to start with that income in mind. And one of the most common pitfalls in the income side is assuming more participation than reasonable. So if you're saying entry fees are going to be a certain amount or so many people are going to sign up and pay a fee, what do you have to base that on? Is it based on history? Is this your first year event? How many people do you have on your mailing list? You know, what if 25% or 20% or 15% participated. So you want to be reasonable in your income assumptions. Next, we're moving into the expense side. And as you can see here, they've done a great job breaking down the various types of expenses. Oh, I forgot to notice they also have some other income items there. Um, and the one thing on the income that they didn't do, I would recommend is state their assumptions, right? So entry fees are 100 people at $10 each. Um, so definitely maybe even building this form for your organization, I'd recommend including those key assumptions. Okay, now into the expenses. I love how they've grouped similar expenses together. Like, okay, we have site expenses, expenses associated with having a location to do this event at. Um, next, they've gone into sponsor or uh, Oh, their sponsors, those are up at the top. I, I'm missing their form. I misread it as left to right versus top to bottom. So um, down in the expense section, they're looking at decorations. And we're also going to have things like food, right, as entertainment potentially. Um, and so here, the layout is absolutely um, a preference thing. And you can find lots of these on the internet. So this was just one that I grabbed. But the point being, really take the time to plan your events. Put all your income assumptions down put all of your expense assumptions down. Um, another common pitfall is not taking into account when something's a variable expense versus a fixed expense. Say for example, if you're taking a group of kids to a camp and you're renting a bus, the bus is gonna cover a certain number, say 45 kids in a bus. Well, at the point that you start registering 50 kids, you just tip the scales to needing a second bus and yet you haven't filled it. So those are some of those variable costs versus fixed costs. That's kind of a fixed cost that varies at 50 or 45, whatever the, the points are that you need another piece of transportation. Um, as composed to a true variable cost might be in the camp example, the cost per kid that you're gonna feed them. So you don't buy as much food, uh, depend, you buy the right amount of food depending on the number of kids that are going. So you don't buy for 100 kids if you're only going to feed 50. Um, so these are some common ex, um, event examples that I've seen. I hope they're helpful to you. I would absolutely recommend that you um, create a form in your organization. And more importantly than even the planning process, have the follow-up or the debrief process, the post-event analysis where you actually look at those budgeted assumptions to the reality of what fell out, the actual results. 
Hopefully your accounting staff can help you produce those analysis and then include that information as a look back when you're done and as a planning tool next year in case you're doing the event again. All right, well, I hope that's been helpful. I hope that you can um, use, is sure you some thoughts about what you should be doing. And as always, I love providing just thinking tips, strategic partnership tips with you here to be thinking about money in your organization because it matters. So I um, hope you uh, can either follow me where you're at or subscribe if you'd like to continue to receive tips just like this.